Hey y'all, in for H and H. About to chase my friend Ariel. NY4G. He is on a soda summit. Look at his signal strength. So he's really approaching S7. Much more clear with the QRM eliminator. However, I want to show you something. When I transmit, I'm gonna have a high SWR. I've got this meter set to, to SWR. I'll explain that in a minute. Now watch. Okay, so um, let me get up here and log that right quick. And I'll tell you <clears throat> what changed. So this is the QRM eliminator up here, right? You know that I normally use that on sideband. And that is a typical application for it to reduce, reduce uh, pulse noise, you know, to reduce pulse type interference because you can can't phase cancel. In this case, I was just using it to, uh, you know, really a little bit of attenuation, but also phasing out some of the... Uh, atmospheric noise you can tolerate the power line noise and it isn't as bad on on 40 meters as it is on 15 and 10 12 uh, even 20 80 it's bad on 80 you know it's not as offensive on every band let me explain why the SWR was high so you remember from the other videos about the QRM eliminator that I mentioned you need a push to talk command to go to it, okay? Watch the very first video where I wired up and you'll remember that back here on the top requires an RCA uh, plug. There's a receptacle there for an RCA plug. That's for push to talk. I'm using a Heil FS2 foot switch which can key the radio as well as uh, send that a push to talk command. I don't need that, uh, that what that FS2 is made for is to be able to transmit a, t an amplifier that if you don't have a control cable for the amp between the radio and the amp, which I do between the 5000 and the Elecraft, but I'm not even using the Elecraft. I was just running the 200 watts out of the radio then. The thing is this QRM eliminator has to know when I'm transmitting so it can, it can uh, bypass. I mean, I, could, I took a chance damaging it right then. I'll just tell you that flat out, putting 200 watts through it because they're rated for 100 watts. Okay, I do that for you guys. <laughs> By not pressing that foot switch the first time I transmitted, I had a high SWR because this thing wasn't bypassed. When I keyed the second time and went back to him, and for that matter, the third time, I pressed my foot switch simultaneously while I pressed my paddle. And that's why the SWR dropped because it then went to bypass. 
that is the importance of having that connection. So if you get one of these devices, be absolutely sure that you have a way to trigger that. Now, here's the issue you might run into. This radio, the FTDX 5000 MP, has a TX ground connection on the back. That's an RCA connection. I could go from there to the QRM eliminator. I have to go into my menu. I'll, I'll show you while I talk about it, give you a little something else to look at. I'm going into the menu. Menu number uh, 173. You're going to notice that it is disabled right now. Look out here at the far right. Disable. Okay, but that's the transmit ground. So if I were to connect an RCA cable to that plug on the uh, receptacle on the back of the radio and then plug it into the QRM eliminator, that will take care of it. But I uh, will mention that uh, there's a relay in the radio that's going to click every time I do that. Okay, that's what it's made for, but it will eventually wear out. Having the foot switch anyway and not needing the RCA plug that's on it, I'm just eliminating using my relay inside the radio. Now, honestly, if I were going to do a lot of CW with the QRM eliminator, I probably would go ahead and use the TX ground and hook up an RCA cable. Uh, th this video may be too much for some of you if you're new to this. Uh, let me give a little background. The older amplifiers, I have one sitting over here. Uh, they still make it, the Ameritron AL80B. It has a RCA plug on the back that needs that TX ground to transmit, so it knows to transmit. And even then, it pulls in a big relay inside of it. So the relay in the rig is actually pulling in a big relay inside the amplifier. The modern amplifiers, especially the solid states, you can buy these control cables, which I have. I have the Elecraft control cable that goes between the FTDX 5000 and my Elecraft amplifier. I also have the control cable, a different one, that can connect the FTDX 10 over here to the amplifier. It's a different cable because the back of the radios have two different kind of connectors. The connection on the back of the FTDX 10 is called linear. And on the back of the FTDX 5000, there's a, a, a different arrangement, different connector, and it's called band data. So you get the right cable to go between the radio and the amplifier, and everything is electronic. You don't have to do anything. It tells the amp what band I just went to, and it tells the amp when to transmit all solid state. You know, it's, it's done with transistors rather than a relay. And again, the relay could wear out. I had that happen on a rig years ago and I, I only found one replacement relay because the radio had not been made in years. I found one replacement relay over in Europe. I ordered it and I said, well, I said to myself, self, try to find another way so you don't wear that relay out again. And I'll tell you why, because all throughout that radio, that same exact relay is used all over the place. So I have one, I, I was only able to get one. I replaced it, I have no spare. So I think, okay, I'm gonna, approach this differently. So that's why I bought the Heil foot switch. And to be honest with you, that's what led to me getting the Heil microphone and the boom set up. Because it was a little bit awkward to have the foot switch and a desk mic because I was using the Yaesu MD100 desk mic. So that's the evolution of my shack in the background on why I have that Heil foot switch in the first place. Again, it's the model number FS-2. has two cables, not one. Two cables. One comes up to the, that right there is part of that cable. You see two wires, come, two wires coming out of there. One's going over to the microphone. The other one is coming up from, um, let me see if you can see that. Yeah, there it is. It's a quarter inch. That's coming from the foot switch to key the radio. The other connection is a red, I'll go ahead and unplug it up here. This red RCA cable. That's coming off the same foot switch. And again, that is to tell the QRM eliminator to go to bypass when I'm transmitting. Okay, so again, I could have done that from the radio, but I'm just saving my relay. If I were going to use the QRM elim eliminator a lot on CW, I would probably go ahead and connect the cable to the back of the radio. But I really don't use it much on CW because of the uh, fact that um, you know, CW is so narrow, it's going to get rid of a lot of the noise anyway. If you, if you operate CW the way I do, and I've covered that in other videos, so no need to belabor that here. What it did give me an, an opportunity to show you, though, is the importance of having that 
push the talk circuit connected, you saw that I had a high SWR here when I was transmitting. He still heard me. Did you notice that? But he probably heard me uh, heavily, well, somewhat attenuated. I think the SWR was approaching three to one, but with 200 watts, he still heard me and it was CW. He would have heard me with, honestly, he could have heard me with five watts, but I was definitely attenuated to some extent because of what was happening through that QRM eliminator circuit. So we just wanted you to see that. And, uh, you know, since there's been a lot more interest in devices like this of late, uh, because we're all dealing with noise, unlike we've ever dealt with before, just, you know, to a greater degree, a lot more devices on the market, electronics devices that uh, can cause interference to our radios. I mean, be careful. My rule of thumb is I, if I'm in a store and I see some new electric gadget, electronic gadget, and I think, okay, that's going to plug in somewhere in my house. That's a potential for radio interference. I've had it happen a couple of times. I returned the devices. One of them was a wireless phone charger. The other was an LED light bulb. And uh, well, there was, a, there was one other. There was a, a wall wart power supply, and I was able to get a, a different power supply that was well filtered. So anyway, I just wanted you to see that so that you would know why it's important to connect a PTT connection to these devices. Now, if you have an FTDX10, let me address that. You don't have that TX ground RCA jack on the back of that radio. You have a linear port, which is 10 pin mini DIN, and you have a tuner port, which is an eight pin mini DIN. I would say try to find, buy, or build a cable that can take advantage of the TX ground that is in that connector. There is one in both. In fact, that's what's keying my amplifier. The 10 pin linear port on the FTDX10 has a ground pin in there and, and, and a high side too. Pins one, two, and three are, are ground, transmit ground, and volts. And so those can be used to trigger the amp and that's what they do. The tuner port has the same thing, different pin arrangement. And so you can buy cables out there. I actually have one that is a, a 10 pin mini den that only has connections for the push to talk lines in that FTDX10. So uh, let me frame it this way. If you are not using an amplifier and therefore not using the linear port, then you could buy a cable that has the 10 pin mini den wired to those to the uh, transmit um, points on that connector and the other end has an RCA plug. I have one, like I said, I ordered it, found it on eBay. Now, if you are using your linear port, but let's say you're not using your tuner port, then you could wire or find an eight pin that also takes advantage of that transmit signal from the output of the radio and use that for your QRM eliminator. It just worked out for me that the foot switch was available, keeping the radio out of the equation. Okay, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Thank you to the Patreon support team who bring you these videos. If you're watching a video now, it's because of what I call the long haulers. They've uh, joined through the Patreon program and supported this channel for a year and two and even more. Those long haulers are what, you know, funds the channel enough that I can keep these videos coming. I appreciate any, any level you can help though. Uh, there are three levels of support. You can find one that's comfortable for you if you like this type of content and want to see it continue. Uh, you can vote, as they say, vote with your wallet to help uh, offset the cost of doing this. To uh, join that team, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. That's patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. And if you would, give the video a thumbs up, a like. That helps us out with YouTube's search algorithm and costs you nothing. And you're actually helping the channel uh, by doing that. And also consider subscribing to the channel. That helps as well. If you do subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I upload a new video, usually two a week, occasionally a third. And also, finally, if you would, please share the link to this video on social media, text message, email, or phone a friend. Hey, thanks again for watching, and 73 from N4HNH.